What's up everybody? This is Colin from Holistic Heritage Homestead. I hope you're all well. This is going to be a new compost pile. This thing is about four feet high and we're going directly on the ground, which is gonna be great. That's gonna give us some organic matter to start with. And it's also going to give us a direct connection to all that soil microbiology, which is what we want in this compost pile. Those living roots, those roots in the ground, that's where a lot of the microbiology lives. And that's what's going to help inoculate this compost pile. So here's the deal. We want more compost because we want to grow more and more food. And some of this stuff might even be for sale. If you folks are in the Missouri area, please just connect with us for uh, some compost. We're going to call this artisan compost. This is or this is organic gourmet compost, folks. This stuff is going to have lots of nutrition and we're going to fill this with many different things. A variety of different things means a variety of nutrients. Okay. For those of you who have been following our channel, we compost with chickens. We also use rabbit manure. So there's going to be lots of different things in here, ranging from bones, uh, seafood shells, um, chicken coop clean out. That's going to be pine chips and whatever organic matter we put in there. Obviously chicken manure and the compost pile that we have in the chicken run. For those of you who have been following our, our videos, who have been watching, that's going to be layered in here um, like lasagna. So I'm going to put down some carbon at the bottom. Lots of carbon to act like a sponge to hold moisture, kind of like we use in our Hugo culture um, growing. So if you checked out our, our previous video with the Hugo culture system with uh, combined with lasagna system in our growing containers, um, you'll know why we want that carbon on the bottom. It's to hold moisture. And also another reason is you want that carbon on the bottom because it's going to hold nutrients. Sure, we want this to go into the ground, but we don't want to leach or lose too many nutrients into the ground, okay? We want to keep as much of that in the compost pile as possible. So rabbit manure is also going to go in here. Lots of landscape cleanup, lots of branches, lots of different things. Um, seedling, uh, when we thin seedlings, we might be putting those in here. Most likely those will go to the chicken compost pile or to the chickens themselves, or maybe to the rabbits, maybe to the pigs. Uh, but we're gonna be putting some of that in here. We're also gonna be putting food scraps, but we're gonna be burying our food scraps, okay? In the compost pile, we do not want to attract any pests or any mice or anything like that. However, we have this very small gauge hardware cloth, which is going to be keeping a lot of animals out. Sure, they could burrow underneath, whatever. We're not really concerned about that. If anything, they're gonna move this around, till it, oxygenate it, and maybe even add some organic matter or manure themselves. Um, not really concerned about that, folks. So we are seriously upgrading our compost production here, and this is going to be awesome. Just a little uh, little tip for you folks. If, you're have, if you have a compost pile on the ground, you might want to plant some, some plants, preferably larger plants, preferably plants that could be considered biodynamic accumulators outside your compost pile. So all along the side of, of this pile, we are going to be planting comfrey. Comfrey is awesome. Do your research, folks. I'll be putting some videos out about, about comfrey. I've put some videos, a video or videos out about comfrey in the past. Um, it's a great green manure. It's a great chop and drop. It's a great ground cover. It's actually, if you just kind of soak it, you can make tea with it. I mean, it has medicinal qualities for people. It's just a great plant. Also things like mammoth sunflowers. They're going to grow over this thing. They're going to provide shade for this, which is great. I might cover this with a tarp, but I'm thinking not. Most of this, I mean, this is four feet. This is going to be four feet plus tall. So I'm not really concerned about shade because most of this will be covered by soil <laughs> or compost rather, uh, hopefully turning into soil. So the beautiful thing about that is once we have the comfrey and we have the other plants, whatever they may be, um, growing alongside this, the Russian mammoth sunflower, definitely want to plant those. We can just literally chop them and throw them into the compost pile. So it's kind of creating a pump. Nutrients go down, they leach out, they go and become part of the, the plants that are on the outside, cut them, throw them in. Kind of a circular motion of, of, of nutrients here, okay? 
this is some stuff that I've, I've learned over the years, folks, and some things that I think I might have come up with myself. And I think this is a great system. Really simple. These things here, I'm using them only temporary to hold this up just to kind of give it a little bit of a frame or a shape. Um, I bought these like on soup. They were super cheap, like a dollar or two or three bucks a piece or something in a store. I think they might have been on sale. Um, I'm going to be using these, by the way, with some rope as a modified uh, trellis or as a trellis for some growing that we will be doing that we are doing that we'll need trellising soon. So there's a little tip for you there. Full of tips, folks. Got lots of tips. Um, so don't overthink composting. You want a large pile. You want it at least three feet tall, three feet wide. The bigger you go, the better as far as a hot compost because you have more biomass. More biomass, that means more heat. The heat is good because it breaks down any unwanted things. And it also can, I believe, conjugate or perhaps maybe, maybe, maybe that's the word. Uh, it could bind and make inert or um, uh, some unwanted things in your compost pile. So that could be toxins, poisons. Do your research on that. I don't want to claim anything, but I've heard that hot composts are good for kind of detoxing. Um, they're also It's also beneficial to hot compost because it helps break things down more and therefore make them more bioavailable to your plants when you do use it. It's also good because it will help kill any weed seeds that you do not want when you're when you're growing, especially like in containers, even in ground, you don't want those weeds popping up unless you're managing them and using them and controlling them the way that we do. Um, please check out my previous videos. I talk about how weeds are beneficial. Um, weeds are just essentially by definition, any plants that people do not want. And I tell you what, um, if you can look around our property, I want all the plants. I want all these plants. This lush, lush property here, okay, is being healed. The soil is being remediated, providing habitat for wildlife, helping the soil microbiology, building our topsoil upwards that we're creating deeper topsoil. I mean, let your property grow. It's really, really great, folks. So we're gonna be filling this with so many things, so many things. It's gonna turn into a lot of production. With this pile here, it's strategically located next to our food forest. And it's also not far from our new container gardening area where we also have a Hugo culture raised bed. We're gonna be putting some raised beds. It's also close to our mulberry trees there. One of them produces fruit, which is awesome. The other one I believe is a male. Um, strategically located close to our chicken coop. So if you're putting a, um, and, and close to our, where our rabbits are over there. If you're putting a compost pile somewhere, you do wanna think about location. You want it to be convenient. This is also, here's our solar panels. This is also kind of uphill. So if I'm bringing this down to where we want to use it, I'm bringing a wheelbarrow <laughs> downhill <laughs> full of compost as opposed to uphill, which is also, I consider, pretty smart. This is part of design, folks. This is part of gardening design, part of permaculture design, part of composting design. And when you put systems in place, you can really... Um, maximize or get close to maximizing a productivity and you could produce a lot of food folks a lot of food so it's a beautiful spring day rain is coming down and i'm enjoying this time out here folks expanding our compost system and just really leveling up here this is going to be a massive amount of compost more than enough for us to use hopefully and maybe enough for us to sell again if you're interested in buying some compost it's going to be phenomenal prices, cheaper than the garbage you buy at the stores. Just if you're in Missouri, contact me, find us in our email and, um, you know, we'd be happy to help you out there. That would be really awesome. If you folks found this to be beneficial, if you got even one idea from this, please just help out the channel. It would really be appreciated. We do have a buy me a coffee link in our, I believe that would be called our homepage our landing page, wherever that is, you know, just stop by and show support. Even a few bucks really does help us out so we can spend more time doing this and giving you folks valuable information so you can provide for your families and be more self-sufficient. Um, that would be really appreciated. At the least, please subscribe. Please get involved in the comments below. Share this, share this video so people can really just see how simple and fun composting can be. And uh, maybe they can get a few tips from this, okay? Any support, we sincerely appreciate, folks. And... Um, Thanks again, everybody. Happy composting. Happy gardening. Be well.